football at Jimmy and Dwight and Dollars, just friends of his. And then the next year it was 32, and then it was 64, and it was so on and so forth. And, and before Jimmy left to go to Carolina, Jimmy Valley, uh, it had get grown to about 300 to 325 guys that would come from all over the places. Jimmy always had his buddies speak and different coaches and different college coaches and friends of his because he was on the road so much working on a lot of different players. He made a lot of friends. When he went to Charlotte, the Carolina Panthers, uh, he called me and said, why don't you do the clinic, take it over? And I said, well, if I do it, I'm going to use all the pro guys. I was with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers the last four years and the Jets before that and so on. Uh, so I said, fine. I said, I'm going to use all the pro guys to do the, do the clinic. Well, last year down in Tampa, we had about 300 guys the first year. So when I took the job here at the University of Cincinnati, he called again and said, well, let's bring it back to Cincinnati. So we mailed everybody, like you know, we mail all his friends and everything. All everybody goes to a book that we get. Okay, so we're back here in Cincinnati. Now this, some of the rules and stuff that we like to go by, we don't like any talking. It's very distracting when you went up on a stage here or some guy's trying to figure out how to box a linebacker back there in the back room. Okay, you're trying to teach something up here. So the, try to keep the conversation not we might have one at all. If you want to talk and do something, just go outside. Okay, by the tables of the machines out there and try to figure it all out. Okay? If you have any questions after the guys are speaking, don't, you know, try to hold your questions to the end of the hour or okay, when the break happens, they're going, to, they're going to be here all day, so you can get them. Okay? I ain't going to pay them, so they're going to be here. Right? So uh, you can get your questions answered. So if they're talking about something, Write it down, the question you have, and then they'll answer it. Now, you're at the end of the hour, they're on the break, you can get them, they'll be around all day. Now, the guys that I have speaking here have Paul Woodrow from the Detroit Lions, never played pro football. Have Jim McNally from the Carolina Panthers, never played pro football. Okay. I have Jim Hannafy, probably a grandfather of all of us, okay, never played pro football. What else do I have here? I have myself. Never played pro football. Okay, who am I forgetting? Paul Alexander from the Bengals. Okay? Another one. They're, they're all friends of us. We're all friends. The reason these guys are because they are good teachers. They can teach. They have coached at every level and they can teach. Okay? That's why they're where they're at, because they're good teachers, they're communicators, and they get across what they're trying to accomplish, and you can see what they're talking about on film that it works. Okay, now there's a lot of different ways to get things done, okay? But the reason these guys are where they are, okay, is because they're good teachers and they're good coaches. And they'll, and they'll spend a lot of time with you, and every one of them is coached at all levels. Okay? There's some of them coaching high school, they were part-time college guys, they were full-time college guys, they were in the pros, okay, they'll spend a lot of time with you. Okay? So if you see them and you need something after they finish their lecture, then you know, get them. Don't worry about it. Ask all the questions you want. You guys have a lot of things that you want answered during the course of the day. We're probably not going to cover everything that you want covered. We try to break it up. I'm going to do the first two hours. I'm going to talk about just fundamental things of one block, and it's the stance, different drills and square drills that we do. I've been very fortunate to be around some really good coaches, Jim McNally's good girl, a guy named Georgia DeLeon, who I worked with back there at Holy Cross College, really helped me out. Uh, you know, Larry Bechtel from the Miami Dolphins now, okay? So, any time you find one of these guys, you want to ask them something, ask them something. We have some tapes here, okay? Uh, Paul Woodrow was nice enough to send his tape down early that he's going to speak on and all his drills and stuff that he uses up there in Detroit if you want the tape. This guy right here, John Whitaker, right? It's $5. You can't, you can't beat it. Okay, it's $5 for his drill tape up here. If you want any of my tapes, it's the same thing. Okay, we're not here to make a whole lot of money on this, guys. If you want to take the whole clinic, okay, then there's another fly here where you can fill this out and you can send it in and they'll send you, John, send you a tape here. Whatever the cost is on that flyer right there. So just so you, there's Jimmy right there. Jim McNally, you know who he is. There's Paul Boudreau sitting right here. Is Paul Alexander here yet? Paul's not here. Jim Hannaford. You see him walking around. He's working out. White haired, old, crusty kind of guy. He's, you know who he was. 
Colin Joe Delano Bush covers the other night the Pro Bowl around Hawaii. He was. Okay, let's get started. And I'm going to go for 15 minutes and take a 10 minute break. And I'm going to go for another 15 and take a 10 minute break. Okay? So any questions you want, kind of hold them a little bit and I'll get to everything you guys want. Uh, and we'll get going here. So, alright. The first thing I want to talk about. Offensive line play. I think an offensive line play has two things that are critical. And I really firmly believe in the two things. Number one is, okay, mental mistakes. You don't want to have any mental mistakes on line of scrimmage. You don't. Because you may not have the best players. Okay? And if they go block, block the wrong guys, it's even worse. So you want them at least going to the right people. Because they may fall down and the guy may trip over them and the back's still going. Or they may fall down and the guy trips over them and the quarterback throws the ball. So at least if they go to the right people, you have a chance, even if you don't have as good as players the opposing team. Number two is your departure angle from the line of scrimmage. Your departure angle, you hear my, hear my guys, now my guys haven't got this quite yet, so it's not, anyway, we're working at it, okay? But the departure angles from the line of scrimmage is critical. If you depart the line of scrimmage at the wrong angle, then you're going to be behind right from the get-go. Okay? You're going to be behind, right? You may be halfway in behind the guy, the guy's pointing on the edge of your path. Why? Because you took the wrong angle to try to block that guy. So when you depart the line of scrimmage, you want to be exact. Okay? You want to hit the right landmark on that defender that you're trying to block. Now what I'm going to give you the first 40 or 50 minutes here is all fundamental with me regardless of what level you play on, you can use a lot of this stuff that I'm going to talk about. So what I, I like to train my guys with three thoughts in mind. Three simple thoughts. Number one is a play call in the huddle. Let's say the play in the huddle we're going to call Pro Right 16 Mike. That's a base play that we use, like 16 Zeus. <clears throat> Pro right, 16 Mike, on two, ready, break, and they come to the line of scrimmage. On their way to the line of scrimmage, I want the offensive lineman thinking about, who do I have to block? Break that down. They have a thought progression that they go through. The first thing is, who do I have to block? Got to get to the line of scrimmage. It's on the way, who do I have to block? How do you get to the line of scrimmage? And they get down in a preset position. Some guys put them down, that's fine. We get down in a preset position. The next thing I want them to think about is what can the defense do to me in the configuration that they line up in? Because they get down, they look at a picture. What can that defense do to me? The linebacker may be shaking a little bit more with the B gap. Okay? That five technique may be a little tighter. Uh, uh, look, you might ram that end inside and run the linebacker over the top. What can the defense do to me in the configuration that they line up in? And the third thing I want them to think about is how am I going to block it? How am I going to get the job done? Am I going to step with my outside leg? Am I going to step with my inside leg? Am I going to have to bring the guard with me? Is the guy too wide? Am I going to have to bring the tackle down and pull? Okay. How am I going to get the job done? What are all my tools? What are all my line calls? What do I need to get the job done? So those three things on every single play, run or pass, it doesn't make any difference. What's the first one? Who do I have to block? The second one, what can the defense do to me? And the third one, how am I going to get the job done? Okay. What tools has, I, has my coach given me during the week to get this job done? And you drill them over and over and over and over again in that thought. We should get them going to the right people, guys. You give yourself a chance. You're giving yourself a chance. Now, let's start right from the basics. And this has been going around for a long time. And there's a lot of different thought processes on this and everything. And it, it started. I think it started way back with a guy named Ernie Zwallen when Jim McNally went to visit Ernie Zwallen back at the Baltimore Colts back in 1978. I had my big trade somewhere back in that area. Okay, it was how do you, you have to have your body work in this kind of configuration. In other words, you have to be in what we call a demeanor. You have to be flat footed. You have to bend your knees and try to keep your shoulders behind your knees, okay, with an arch in your back, 
And you have to be able to work, whether it's pass or run, in a bent knee position, okay, with your elbows in, your hands up, and your center of gravity down the middle of your body. You have to be able to work in that position. Because it's easy to play with your legs straight, but you're not going to block anybody or a pass. So you have to train your guys to work in that bent knee position. We call it a duck. Okay, where they bend, the shoulders will stay in back of their knees. Okay, they've got their head up. They've got an arch in their back. Okay, and they've got their hands up. Now you have to train them like that. How do you train them? We do what the, a drill, drill we call the meter. They down like this. Okay, when they go side to side, I don't care how fast they go, I just want them to work, okay, with their knees bent. So when they go side to side, they'll shake their hands. When they go forward and backward, they'll pump their arms. But they work with their knees bent. They work with their knees bent. And you train them because it's hard to stay down in this position, okay, for a long period of time. It burns. It burns. But you've got to train them. And you train them, I do squares, and I'll tell you about the squares in a minute, but that's the first thing that I try to teach you, is you have to learn to play with your knees bent in here, okay, with a good body posture, a good demeanor, because when you get down here, okay, you still want to be able, this is where all your force angles, that's where all your angles lock in. Does anybody know the concept of leverage? What's leverage? We all talk about what leverage is. What's leverage? There's two power forces in the body. You have an upper body, upper body, power force here. And you have your lower angles in your knees and your hips and so on. So what's leverage? Leverage is when you separate the upper body from the lower body. So it's here, if you separate the defensive guy, because he's down like this, if you can separate that upper body angle, okay, straighten him up from his lower body angles, you've created leverage. So leverage is nothing more than taking the defender's upper, pot, upper body power angle and straightening it up, okay, and separating it from his lower body angle. And all you need is to keep your pad level about that much lower than the defender. That ain't a whole lot now, is it? If you're going to train the kids to be the demeanor, to play that much lower than the defender. Now, that's saying that's easy. Motion. In pro football, those are so big and strong, they're all up here. Okay? The guys have a 6'7 and 6'8. They don't want to bend their legs to get down here because it hurts. You're going to train the shit out. Let me tell you. Okay, you train them, you train them, you train them until it hurts. And when you think they've done it enough, do it one more time. When you think they've done it the meaner thing enough, okay, you do it one more time. And then when they stop bitching at you, then you know you probably got enough. You see what I'm saying? Ah, oh, fuck this shit. You hear that old bitching, right? Then you probably got enough. Okay? And let's talk about the next one. You get to train them with their knees back. I keep going over and over again because I think those are important fundamental things at any level that you need to do. So we train them with their knees back. Teach them how to move with their legs back. Teach them a good body posture. Next, the stance. This is another 20 minute visitation. This is on this. On the right side of the ball, we're in a right handed stance. On the left side of the ball, we're in a left-handed stance. Why do you think that happened? How did it all start? It started a long time ago. But it first started, okay, because of the run. People think it was because of the pass. It wasn't because of the pass. It started because of the run. Now it fits into the pass because your left half was already in. You can kick, okay, and he's already a pass block, right? But it started for the run. What did I talk about in the beginning? Your angle of departure from the line of scrimmage is critical. You can take a more accurate first step with your staggered leg. So if I'm the right guard or right tackle, this first step off the football where it has to be here, here, back here, okay, it can be more accurate when I'm in a right-handed stance. 
takes all my angle of departure from the line of scrimmage will be more accurate. Same thing on the left side. Departing the line of scrimmage, I can take a more accurate step with my staggered leg, my outside leg now, because I'm in a left-handed stance, coming off the ball. Right here, you say, well, hey coach, my guys can't do that. That's bullshit. And I'll tell you why. Because the coach doesn't feel comfortable with getting in a right-handed stance or a left-handed stance. It doesn't make any difference if you guys can feel comfortable with that shit or not, because you ain't gonna play. Okay? You're not gonna play one snap. It's the kid. You tell him you're getting a left-handed stance, and you're gonna be standing over here on the side of me on the sideline over here watching the game. You'll be surprised how fast they learn to get in a left-handed stance. And they learn how to like it. Okay? So right-handed ball and right-handed stance, left-hand side of the ball, left-hand side. We get our feet, shoulder width apart, armpit to shoulder width. Some of the taller guys are gonna be a little wider. Some of the guys, will, you know, maybe a little narrower, but it's somewhere in that vicinity, okay? We have a toe and step relationship. Toe and step relationship, okay? We're going to bend. We're gonna keep our inside foot flat. We're going to bend at the waist and put our elbows on the top of our knees. Just like this, a preset, we were in a preset position. Preset, some guys get up and get down, that's fine. Okay, I got nothing wrong with that. Okay, but we're gonna be in a preset position, okay? My inside leg's gonna be flat, okay? My knees are going to be in line with my hips. As much as I can get them, I want my knees in line with my hip. You see that right there? Because when that knee is in line with that hip, Okay, that's when the body is in the, the best possible configuration to generate the most amount of power. That's where the most of your power is going to come from. Okay, so when they get down in their stance, if how many guys have seen this? They get down in their stance and their knees go outside of their hips like that. You guys all seen that stance? You see what I'm saying? Here, okay, they can't block. They're too wide. They can have a wide base. They can have a wide base, but they have to be narrow with their knees. You see what I'm saying? My base can be a little bit wider as long as my knees stay in line with my hips. Critical point. Critical approaching point. So now we're in the bent knee position. My elbows are on my knees. Okay? About like this. Okay? Now I want to take my down hand. My guy, the hand I'm going to put on my on the ground, and I'm going to stretch out as far as I can with it, okay, and pull back in my hips. I am going to stretch out as far as I can, and I'm losing this bike. I'm going to stretch out as far as I can with it, and pull back in my hips. Here. Right there. Okay? I can pick it up. Okay? Without changing my body weight. Now I'm an old son of a gun. Got a big pop belly. Alright? But I can still have enough flexibility that I can reach out as far as I can, put that down hand on the ground. Okay? I take the inside, take the inside of my off arm, and I put it on the out the inside of my off arm, and I put it on the outside of the knee. And I relax the hand. The inside of the off arm, some guys will have it up here, I don't care. I got this point from Paul, okay, he was watching the San Francisco 49er, and he saw that, hey, there was a defensive lineman in San Francisco, they put their hands over here on defense, a little more staggered in their stance, and they seemed to get them on the offensive lineman quicker. Okay, that's good. And some of my guys, you see number 62 when I was with Tampa, he had backwards, he does that. And you see Scott Bill and Paul Gruber, they're more like this, okay? Because they felt that they could be down in here, okay? Still be able to set nice and low, okay? With this elbow on the outside of the knee would square up their shoulders a little more and they could still get that hand on the front and out. I see a lot of guys when I look at some high school tapes, some of the college tapes, they got this hand so tight. It's so quick. I mean, they're like, well, how? You've got to relax your muscles before you move. You've got to relax your muscles before you move, so you better be, okay, relaxed. I'm in my stance, okay, but I'm relaxed. But when the ball snapped, 
Okay? That's when I can move. I don't have to... I, I tighten up and go. I don't have to relax my muscles and my stance and then, you know, tighten back up and go. And so what we talked about, the demeanor, the stance, okay? We like to get them down in this area here, okay? Now, how do you check their stance? You put them in their stance, and I say, pick up your hand. If they do this, watch my body do. I say, pick up your hand, they're gonna go, wrong. So I did, I rock back to pick up my body weight, not pick up my hand. They got their weight distributed all wrong. Okay? They may have to do this. They're on this side. Pick up your down hand. They move their weight over and they pick up their down hand. Wrong. They should be able to pick up their down hand with very little weight on it. Okay? And not move their body. And still have a good low base, power angles in your knees, and your shoulders are still nice and level. Everybody, everybody, follow that.